Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be looking at the January 2022 CXE Mathematics Pass Paper and we're focusing on vectors and matrices. And without further ado, we'll get right into it. We'll start here. Question 10a says that three points O, P and R are shown on the grid below. O is the origin. And very often we use O to represent the origin because we know whenever it comes to O, O, P, O, R, we are talking about the position vector, meaning that you take it away from the origin. Good. Now there's a very important point that we must make about the position vector. All right, let's go. It says write the position vector of R, O, R in the form A, B. Now, normally to write the position vector, I count it off from the origin to get to R. Now, when I go, if I go right, that's a positive, that represents my A value, right or left. And if I go up and down, that's my Y value, that's going to be my B value in the vector here. Now, remember, if you count to the left, that is negative. If you count to the right, that is positive. If you count up, that is positive. And if you count down, that is negative. So let's count. All right, from the origin O here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's five places to the right and then one place up. So we can say OR, which is a position vector, is equal to 5, 1. Now, here is something else that is very important. Once you take a point away or a vector away from the origin, once you take the position vector, then you're going to find out by just taking the coordinate of R, which is 5, 1. Then by turning this into vector form, it becomes a position vector OR. So technically, all position vectors can be written as coordinate and all coordinates can be written as position vectors. Very important that we know that connection. So we didn't actually have to count it off because we know it's coming from the origin. We can simply take the coordinate, which is 5, 1, and then convert it into its vector form, which is OR, in its column form at being 5, 1. So you should know this relationship so you can go back and forth with it. It's very important. All right, let's carry this paper down a bit now. It says, part two, another point R is located such, out in such a way that QR is equal to 2, negative 4. And before I even go any further, let's just put in the vector OR here so we can see it. All right. So this is O, my origin, and I'm going to R, that's vector OR. It's incomplete unless we have the arrow on it indicating that that's where I'm going. Now it says QR is equal to 2, negative 4. No, I do not have Q on my grid, but I have R. So the question is, even though they have given me QR, I don't have Q, so it would be easier for me to go from R to Q so I can find where it is. Now this is where we need to know about negating vector. All right. The problem here is that I need to start at R and go to Q, but I do not know where to put R. I do not know where to put Q, sir. But however, I know where R is, so it's easier for me to go from R back to Q. So here's the concept. Now, if I know that QR is equal to 2, negative 4, RQ would technically be going in the opposite direction. And so to represent that, what we simply do is to negate the component of the vector. So 2 that is positive becomes a minus 2, and 4 that is negative becomes a positive 4. And why am I turning this around? Because I know where R is, so I can go from R to Q. I don't know where Q is at the moment, so it's almost impossible for me to work that out like that. Alright, so going RQ. It means that I'm going to start at R, and I need to get to Q. Alright, here's R. Now, you have negative 2, which is the horizontal component. Because it's negative, it means you simply go left. So I'm going two places to the left from here. So that's one, two. Good. And then the Y component is four. And so positive four. So I'm going to go four places up. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four. So it means that Q is going to be right here. I hope everybody understands that. All right. Now, remember, the only reason why we turn the vector around is to locate where Q is. Because we're still going to have that QR is 2, negative 4, because that's a vector that I want from us. But we have to turn it around so we can locate Q. So let me go ahead and draw this vector right here. All right. And notice you can actually check your answer because they said um, QR is 2, negative 4. 
So let's count it. Let's go from Q to R now to see if we are correct. 2 means I would go 2 places to the right. So 1, 2. Negative 4 means 4 places down. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm at R. So there you have it. So we have it on the grid. All right. So Q is located at this point. So we have Q on the graph. All right. Now let's go. Let's take this down to see if we have a next question on this page. Uh, we don't have a next question on this page. So we're going to move to the other page. All right. It says determine the magnitude of QR. Are the modulus of vector QR, which is the magnitude modulus the length, they all mean the same thing. Now, this is where we apply Pythagoras' theorem, and this is always done the same way. Once you have the vector QR, applying Pythagoras' theorem says that if QR is equal to AB, for example, then the modulus of QR is equal to the square root of A square plus B square. Formula is always the same, so you can actually generalize it. All right? In this case, we found that QR was equal to, let's go back so we can see it, previous. QR is equal to 2, negative 4. So QR is equal to 2, negative 4. All right? So the modulus of QR would be equal to the square root of 2 squared, make sure I put that in a bracket, plus negative 4 squared. It must be in a bracket because without the bracket, it means something totally different. All right? So this becomes the square root, all right? So 2 squared is 4. So that's going to be 4. Negative 4 squared is really negative 4 times negative 4. And we know that once you multiply a negative by a negative, you actually get a positive, right? So that's going to be positive 16. So this becomes the square root of 20. And you simply just put that in a calculator. Press equal. And I think you should get 4.5 units. Don't forget that part. Very important. Now, part 4. Show by calculation that Q, that OPQR is a parallelogram. Now, let's quickly review the properties of a parallelogram. All right? What makes a parallelogram a parallelogram? Opposite sides are equal. Opposite sides are parallel. So, these two sides are equal and parallel. And these two sides are equal and parallel, right? Which means that, let me just label this just like how we have it on the graph. Let me go back and look at the graph, all right? Let me pull this down. All right, so if I were to complete this graph now, let me complete it to show you what they're saying. Because if you see, if you you can actually look at it and realize that it's actually a parallelogram, it's easy to complete, right? So we have O, P, Q, R. So let me complete it. All right, there we go. Now, because I've completed this graph, it's even easier for me because I can show that Q, R and P, Q is the same. They have the same length and they are the same vector and they are equal. We can also look at PQ and OR. So let's go back now. So if it's a parallelogram, if parallelogram, let's use the symbol right here, then we can say that what? Let's just look at the previous figure. QR and PO are equal. PR is equal to PO. And also, I'm just going back to the figure so you can see it each time. All right. PR, QR, sorry, QR and PO is the same. And PQ and OR is the same. Good. Now, let's go back to the diagram. We have already found what QR is. Let's go back to the diagram and look at it. We found what QR is. 
I will know that QR and PO is the same thing. So we can actually count off the vector PO on the diagram here, which you can see if we were to count it off, it would be two to the right and four down. All right, so it would be two minus four. things P O and Q R. Oh, sorry, this should be Q R. Which we found this already. This is equal to two, negative four. Both of them are equal. And the modulus, the modulus therefore of Q R is equal to the modulus of P O, which is equal to four point five units. All right, because we had found the modulus already, and we also found that the vectors are actually the same. Now let's look at PQ and OR. Are these two vectors the same? Let's go back. If we look at PQ, PQ is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 1. And OR is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. So PQ is equal to 5, 1, and OR is equal to 5, 1 as well. So this would imply then that the modulus of PQ is equal to the modulus of OR. And of course, I could go right ahead and prove it. The modulus would be the square root of 5 squared plus 1 squared which would be the square root 5 squared is 25, 1 squared is 1, the square root of 26. Because your simple aim, if I can show that opposite sides are parallel and opposite sides are equal. Now it became easier when I drew the diagram on the graph fully because I can count it off now to show that really and truly these two sides are the same. And once the two vectors are the same, automatically they are parallel and also they will have the same length because 5, 1 and 5, 1 is the same thing. All right? So therefore, O, P, Q, R is a parallelogram. I probably didn't even have to go through so much because I also use a diagram that I'm drawing to assist me. So note here, probably I would write from the diagram. From the diagram. Why do I say from the diagram? Because I completed the graph and the, parallel and the diagram to show the parallelogram and that parallelogram I use it to count off my various vectors. So that's how I know that QR and PO was the same vector. I don't know that PQ and OR is the same vector. So once they're the same vector, they automatically have the same modulus and they're also parallel. And that's all it needs to prove that these two things are right, this figure is actually a parallelogram. All right, let's take this down some more. All right, now question B is actually a matrix question, all right? It says calculate the value of X and the value of Y in the matrix equation below. Now the concept of equality of matrix is that if two matrix are equal, the things that are in the same positions are equal. And once the two matrix are equal, they must have the same order, all right? So for example, if two matrix are equal, it has to be 2 by 2 by 2 by 2, all right? Or 3 by 3 must be equal to 3 by 3. Has to be the same. So therefore, in this case, over here, we have the product of a matrix, which can't work because we need the two matrix to be equal. So we're going to have to get rid of this product here, which means I'm going to have to expand this matrix. So here we go. All right, I will know the concept in multiplying matrix that it's going to be row by column. Row 2 by column 1, then row 2 by column 2. So let this, to let this be quick and easy now, we simply, what we do, since we have two columns in the second matrix, we take the first row of the first matrix and we'll put it down. So we say 1 open bracket plus 5 open bracket. We do it twice because we have two columns in the second matrix. So we're going to have 1 open bracket plus 5 open bracket. We move to row 2 and we do the same thing. 2 open bracket plus y open bracket. We go across again, two open bracket plus y open bracket. Remember it's done twice because of the number of columns in the second matrix. Now what goes into those brackets? A column. 
of the second matrix. The first column is negative 4, 2. So I'm going to have negative 4, 2. Negative 4, 2. And remember, columns go down. The second column is 1, 9. So you have 1, 9, 1, 9. And this is equal to x, 46, 6, 65. All right, good. Now let's simplify and take it further. 1 multiplied by negative 4 is negative 4 plus 5 times 2 is 10. Negative 4 plus 10 is going to give me 6. The calculator can do that for you as well. Here you have 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8, plus y times 2 is 2y. Unlike terms, you can't combine them, so you write it as negative 8 plus 2y. All right, 1 times 1 is 1. And 5 times 9 is 45. Now, 1 plus 45 is 46. There you go. All right, let me write that better. So you're going to have 46 right here. Now, down here, 2 times 1 is 2, plus y times 9 is 9, unlike terms. So I put it back as 2 plus 9y. And this is equal to x, 46, 6, 65. So now we move to the more important phase, which is that whenever the two matrix are equal, the things that are in the same position are equal. So for example, in the first position, you have 6 right here. In the first position over here, you have x. This implies that x must be equal to 6. And as you can see, if you look here at the second thing in the first row, 46 equal to 46. So we know we're good to go. Now I need to find y. I can use any two options. I can use either these positions because these are the same position or I can use this position right here because they're the same. It's really up to you. All right, let me go to the first one. So I know that negative 8 plus 2y must be equal to 6. That is in the same position over there. Now, this is a negative 8, so it comes over with add. So 2y equal to 6 plus 8. 2y is equal to 14. All right, we divide both sides by 2. So y is equal to 7. So therefore, x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 7. And of course, that almost brings us to the end of the paper, which is question C. And C says a transformation T represented by the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0 maps S2, 5 onto S prime, 5, 2. Describe the fully the single transformation. Now, this one is easy. Let me tell you why. All right, notice that you had S to be 2, 5, and S prime to be 5, 2. Now, what happened? The X value became the Y value, and the Y value became the X value. Now, how is that going to remind me what kind of transformation this is? Y becomes X, and X becomes Y. So, the Y value is actually whatever the x value was and the x value is whatever the y value was so technically here it becomes and and guess what now there's one thing you will always remember that involves x becoming y and y becoming x and that is a reflection in the line y equal to x so think about it whenever the x value becomes the y value and the y value becomes the x value it's a reflection in the line y equal x so because whatever x was, it's going to become y, and whatever y was, it's going to become x. So it's easy to remember y equal to x. So the transformation is a reflection in the line y equal x. And there's no doubting about that. How do I remember this? The x value becomes a y value. The y value becomes the x value. It simply must be a reflection in the line y equal x. So y becomes what x was. That's the easy way to remember it. All right? And that takes us to the end of the vectors and matrix question for January 20.